again, from the perspective of initialization, manipulate, uh, uh, read out, and then we'll talk about one qubit and two qubit gate. Okay? So again, very similar. Uh, you need to have a highly purified silicon, right? In this case, only 800 ppm. Is it pp? I don't know if I have typo. I thought it's ppb. Probably it's ppb. Uh, you, you guys try to check it. Right? Uh, 800 part per billion of uh, silicon 29. Silicon 29 have odd number of neutrons, so the nucleus has spin. Right, and then you're going to reduce the spin lifetime of the electron, right? So they use this to enhance the uh, coherence time. This one we discussed last time already. It used spin electron, electron spin resonance, which means just the ra rapid oscillation, okay? Uh, to con uh, with oscillating magnetic field to control the qubit, yeah. Isn't it supposed to be a clean isotope of silicon? Because you want to be clean, but it's always some residue, right? To do purification. Oh, so this is not purified silicon. This is purified already. A long purified, you won't get 800 ppb. Ppb is really small, right? Part per billion. Oh, okay, so I guess in that annotation 29 silicon, you're implying that there's some impurities. It's not isotopically clean. There are 800 ppb of 29 silicon. Right? Every one million atom, you have one twenty-nine. But for natural one, you're actually talking about one percent or something. So it's better than that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now let's take a look again, right? It has something called ESR, electron spin resonance. This is just a metal. So again, we look from the top view. This is the wafer. Last time I showed you the cross section of another paper, right? But here we are looking at the top view. Maybe it would be good just uh, because I don't think all of us can grab this easy. If I do a cross section cut along here, right? I call this A, this is B, and then I look into the cut. This is the top view. I look at the side, right? Then what will you see? You probably will see something this, like this. This is the metal, ESR, right? And then later you have this green one. I cut two and other two metal nine, which is R, right? And then later, I have this red one, which is G1 and G2. Do you see what it is now? Is that okay? Right, so basically, if I move this nine to the transistor here, I may see some transistor underneath. Right, but now it is purely just isolation silicon, maybe with, with some silicon dioxide insulation, and then with this metal line. Okay, so it used this line to pass through uh, current. Now, before that, actually, I should talk about this B0. This is the Z direction, pointing to the right, but now spin up means what? To the right. Okay, and what is the spin down electron? It will be to the left. It's not pointing in and out of the no, page. no, it is pointing uh, parallelly in this direction. Why? If in, huh? Why? Yeah. They just apply in this way. But isn't the, the, the main B? Uh, oh, B the zero. main B zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Pointing to the this direction, right? Okay, sorry. Oh, Good. Sorry. The is out of the page. Right, and then uh, are you okay with this Z direction? So basically, this is what we have. We have a C here, okay? And then we do have this AC field. You pass for this AC current, you create this B1, right? Remember what is this? You just did it in assignment two. Uh, you have this B1 equals to B1 hat, cosine, not B1 hat, right? Equals to B1, which is uh, just a lumber, cosine omega 1t plus phi, x hat, right? But in assignment, you use y hat, right? So this is just, uh, what do you call, MPS law, right? Your current going up right-hand rule, then you have, so if the current is going in this direction, then you have the magnetic field going in this direction, right? And then at this point, this is the qubit, at this point, not this point, at this point, 
the magnetic field is going to go in, right? Correct? And that is the x direction, okay? And then, of course, you also have, if x is going in, then uh, the y is going to be going down here, not into the paper, but going down the, the screen. Is this clear? Everyone can see this? Right, there's some very minor things, but uh, it would be good to understand because uh, if you were to interpret the data, experimental data, you need to know where you set up the magnetic field. Right, so with this, I do have the system. The qubit is here. How do I form the qubit? You see, I have a C metal 9. I have the R here, uh, but it should be the C. R is the reservoir. You have the C. And then you often have this C4 and C3 gate. They are here, uh, or actually this mainly actually is the C, I'm sorry. C, you see this green line, they also go up. They try to confine the electron inside here. You just apply negative potential, then it will raise, uh, raise the barrier, right? And then you can only store one electron if you do it right with the gate potential on top. Right? You have the gate 3 and gate 4. And here I have two qubits. One is here and one is here. Right? So, uh, is this two qubits actually? Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, um, so, you have two gates. So, you have a gate plus your gate plus your configuration. And the confinement will be under plus. So, one of these two, two gates, G1, G2, G3, G4, they make up set of two plungers and two barriers. So, if you have two plungers, then you will have two plungers. Yeah, but I'm mostly looking at uh, the, the confinement. Uh, okay, the confinement is actually, I say it wrong, not between these two, but actually from here yes. to here. Okay, yeah. D do you see that? Yeah, but we will look at that later. We have more picture, right? So I put the spin, electron spin here, right? And how about this SET? This is just like the uh, quantum point contact uh, resistor we discussed last time, but this time it used something called single electron transistor. And basically it can only have one electron at each time in the transport because it actually is also a double barrier quantum well, right? And that why it's so special because again, it will sense the charge here. If you have a charge, then you will change the current a lot because these are quantum uh, electrons, right? To sense the occupation. So in this particular case, they put this B0 equal to 1.4 Tesla, and then the temperature is 50 milli Kelvin. Okay, uh, now, and then we have this reservoir. As we said before, the reservoir is used to charge and discharge for us to do the spin to charge conversion, right? I hope you still remember how we did the spin to charge conversion last time, right? You try to bias the reservoir Fermi level between the Siemens split. And then if you are spin, you have higher energy, in this case spin down, you will lose the electron. If you spin up, which is lower energy, you will gain the electron, right? It's a good chance to review maybe. Uh, right, this is the reservoir, the Fermi level of reservoir, right? And then you have this quantum well. And in this quantum well, you can have spin up or spin down. Right, actually this is spin down and this is spin up, right? So if your electron actually is spin down, you are at high energy, so you can lose the, lose the electron. And then suddenly you have lose the charge, your SET will have higher current, it will bump up, right? And if you have spin up, then it's, not, it's going to uh, stay there, you don't see any change of the current in SET. Okay, that's what we discussed last time. Yeah, you forgot, take a look. Any questions? Okay, so uh, do, do I got in? So I, I don't think I talk about initialization because we already talked about this. Now there's one more thing: is the if I have two qubit, how do I control individual qubit? This nine is going to generate this frequency, right? It's going to affect both qubit. So that's why we need to have the qubit with two different Lamar frequency. And how do we do it? It's use something called star effect. Uh, you just take it for granted. Basically, star effect means that you add a high electric field 
through this gate, and then you will change its resonance frequency in that quantum dot. Okay, so you just take it for granted, right? We won't study the details. But basically because of this, then I can have different frequency because here I just pass through different current, uh, different current, right, with different frequency. I will be able to do uh, different, uh, I will be able to target different qubit for the uh, qubit rotation of the spin in the hyperspace, in the broad sphere. Make sense? Okay. Is the, the spatial difference between them not enough? Uh, the, the, B, the, the B1 will drop off as it reaches. But, but you basically, this is uh, parallel, right? Pretty long. So this magnetic field here and magnetic field here are basically the same, right? I mean, aren't, the, aren't the two oh, this is, separated uh, perpendicular to I that see. Axis? So I was wrong before, right? It's supposed to be one QB here and one QB here. Oh, okay. So they have the same distance. So that is a very good question, right? Now then, maybe maybe you have a new invention. What if you put them at different location? Because from layout perspective, this is possible. Uh, then we need to study if the change of the B field is large enough. Yeah, that that that, that I don't know. Yeah, you're a good point. So maybe we we'll do this as a hand calculation, right? You just use the MPS law. You should be able to figure out. Very good point, right? So. Uh, here, you just repeat what I said. You put something here, and then you have this rotation due to the energy, right? Uh, due to the magnetic field. And then you use an IV converter uh, to sense the current in the SET, which is very small, like what we did earlier. If it is spin down, you see you have a bump, right? And then, is spin up or spin down? Spin up, sorry. And I don't know why you call it spin up this time. Uh, Spin up should have a uh, so spin up should have a higher energy, right? So so here I uh, need to uh, be careful. When you say spin up, right? When you say spin up, it means it is pointing to the right, right? So then you 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 are at, you actually have the so this is spin up, the spin up. Uh, if you spin up, then your magnetic moment is pointing to the left, right? So then that's why you got higher energy. Do you get it? If here the spin up means spin to the right. This is the spin. To the left, okay? No, 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 to the right. I say it wrong. Because B is this so we define z as to the right right so spin up means that your spin is going to the right do you see what i mean so then the magnetic moment is going to the left right so negative mu dot b is larger than zero right because mu and b are opposite so negative and then another negative becomes positive Okay, so that's a way to read the paper, right? So as we said before, right, if you are, uh, have a higher energy, this guy is going to drop off, right? So here actually I should not call it spin up or spin down because uh, it is different from the before. So here I will just call this spin up and spin down instead, right? Because spin up means, oh, oh let me just call it to the right and to the left. Spin up means to the right and this is to the left because the magnetic field is in this direction. Maybe I confuse you, but any question is a good time to make sure if you are confused, it means there are uh, some issue, right? Any questions? Um, I what is that? The spin experiments. That's why they have two quantum dots, I presume. No, because they want to do a two qubit gate. You need two quantum dots. This is this is enough to do a two qubit gate. Okay, yeah. it's not experiment. You're just do it, doing a two qubit gate. Two qubit Q, two qubit gates. You need two electrons. Uh, okay, so you put one on the left. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you manipulate spin, right? Then then we'll discuss two qubit gate later. Okay, that's why they have two. Yeah. Do you always define B not as the B? Yes. 
Yeah, I would just define B log as the C. Call it up. Right? But you can have your own definition, but usually people define it this way, right? So you under, because they did not define what is B not in the uh, what is C in this paper, right. right? And you read it and it match. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now so this is reading, right? Uh maybe I will give a talk about this last time already. I take a look at the video again, right? It's just spin to charge conversion. Um and this will cause the change in the current, right? So I'm not going to uh, say more. Okay, so let's go to the one cubic gate in this system. One cubic gate, you know that if I can do rapid oscillation, then I can do one cubic gate already, right? Because we did, we already done all the derivation, right? We've done the Lamont precession, we've done the rapid oscillation, and you even try it on the y axis in assignment two. So you know I can rotate to any place. So here we don't need to prove any special uh, quantum gate. Um, but what I want to show you, let me, let me see. Uh, yeah, anyway, this is not this. It's just some example. So in this case, they use B0 equal to 1.4 Tesla. So you will do some calculation this is new, not we new, right? The alphabet, or you can just call it the frequency, right? Some people will say F. is just equal to G uh, mu B, B0 divided by H bar, okay? Just the same as what we discussed earlier. And you will get 39.14 gigahertz. Okay, uh, this equation is not exactly the same, but you can just uh, change it because as I say, this is mu b, right? So it's g mu b times b, right? By times b, g mu b times b0, right? That's why g mu b times b0, that I need to divide by h bar uh, also. The reason is because this is energy, right? And this is the frequency. So I think I even missed the two pi here. I forgot to put the two pi. This should be two pi. Okay, I forgot to put two pi. And what is this? Let me just, uh, if you not clear to you, let me say again. It was the delta E, delta E equal to H bar omega L, right? Anything, the energy, right? The frequency times omega, bar, omega uh, H bar is equal to the energy, right? So this V zero, you can just call it VL is equal to omega L divided by 2 pi, right? This is the angular frequency divided by 2 pi is the frequency that you get. That's why I need to divide this whole thing by 2 pi. That's the long frequency. That's what? This is the long frequency. Normal frequency, yeah. Okay, so how do they do it? Look at this. They first uh, apply a pulse uh, I'll maybe start with G4. They have a huge uh, pulse here, a high, a high gate voltage, G4. G4, apply a high gate voltage so that I will get the electron here, right? Because you need to make the well. Remember, confinement is by this green line, by this confinement gate. And then on top of the gates, right, inside the well, you apply a high bias so that you attract the electron there. You store one electron there, right? So this is the VG. And then you apply this pulse. This pulse is just this one, right? Uh, B1 cosine omega 1T. Then you will start the rapid oscillation from ground state to excited state, ground state to excited state, okay? So you wait for a while and then you do the readout. Here's the readout. And again, how do we do the readout? We reduce the gate voltage so that it will go to this level. You have this level, two level, uh, I mean the, Fer the Fermi level of the reservoir is between these two level, right? So that based on that, if it is spin out, it will leave, and then I get a bump in the current. If it is spin down, it won't leave. My current is still small, like this one. 
Then I know that whether it's up or down. Then I get one data point. Only one data point, not even one point here, remember. Only one data point. Then I repeat many times, maybe 1,000 times. Then I get a statistics. The statistics will tell me the state equals to alpha zero plus beta one. We know alpha zero, alpha and beta, which was the C zero and C one in the denervation we had earlier. Remember, we do rapid uh, calculation, right? With this X direction oscillation electric field, we spend a lot of time to derive what is C zero and C one, right? This one basically tell us the C0 square, for example. I, I don't know which one is which, whether it's C1 or C, C0 square, right? So it basically tell me that if for each of this point, I can never measure alpha and beta, right, in quantum mechanics. You only let it collapse, you do many times and you get the percentage. Then that is the C0 square and C1 square, right? So then you see that as the time co goes by, I increase the chance of getting one and then reduce the chance, and then you keep oscillating. That is just because your weather is rotating in the broad sphere from excited state to ground state, excited to state to ground state, and in between when you do measure, you can even have 50-50% to measure zero and one. Yeah. So the reason it never goes to one yeah, this one, uh, I think is the, some, I don't know how to answer, just experimental. Yeah, there, there should be a reason, I don't know how to answer. Why this does not reach zero and what? Um, so I don't know if this is because of, they did not initialize it well at the pole, right? Let's say if uh, oscillating off the pole, but that might not be the case. Uh, what I'm trying to say is this. This is the broad sphere, right? If you, are os if you are oscillating from here to here, you do a, this big circle, then you should have one and zero, right? But it's possible that it was initialized maybe at this point. Then when you do the oscillation, you only oscillate about the cone, right? That we discussed last time. One possibility, but maybe they, they actually did that, so I, I don't know. Yeah, please take a look at the paper, or maybe it's too trivial for people, they don't discuss it, I just don't know this well. Now, this is another, what they call spectrum, which is very useful. So what they do here is that they try to also try to see the, uh, if you try to apply a frequency, that is out of the resonance, electron spin resonance, right? ESR, electron spin resonance. And that resonance is what? When omega L equals to the Lamo frequency, right? Omega one, sorry, omega one equal to omega L in our derivation. Means that the frequency of this uh, curve, right? Of this, of this uh, current, right, is the same as its precession frequency. Then you will see a big peak. If you have some offsets, then you won't be able to drive it. And this is important. Remember, we say if we have two qubits, I want to separate them, right? I, I want to separate them. So if this is very sharp, so that once you are off resonance, you, have, you don't rotate, then I will be able to adjust two qubits easily. Right? But if the two qubits are very close and then this bandwidth is so wide, then you are actually controlling two qubits at the same time. You cannot uh, distinguish the, right, separate the address there. Right? So then uh, this is one thing. And it also related to the pulse, pulse width here. Right? So if you change the pulse width, when you make the pulse really, really long, this cut is like this. When you make the pulse really long, you will actually have a very sharp peak. Now, another reason for this, I guess, is because of the limited pulse width. Uh, because all our derivations are based on infinite side cosine wave, right? When you reduce it to a pulse, then uh, it is no longer accurate, right? Because you do a Fourier transformation, you have many other components. That might be a reason. Because now you see that 
it actually gets brighter and brighter, means that this part will be closer and closer to one when a longer pulse width, right? And you can see it's a sharper and sharper, which makes sense, right? Because uh, you have a well-defined frequency now. So, but that is the trade-off. What's the problem with longer pulse? Why don't I use a longer pulse to do the qubit operation? This is already a single qubit operation, although they are showing... But you want a fast uh, operation. Exactly, yeah? very simple. You want to have a fast operation, right? If you wait, for example, using this one compared to this one, I can have three X more gate operation before it dies, before it decoherent. Okay? Yeah, I guess for experimentation, characterizing the qubit there. We don't far they can stretch the balls. Yeah. Now, then, just quickly about this uh, T2. We discussed the T2 before. Uh, uh, it's like, actually, this called Ramsey fringes. You, again, start with, uh, you just go back, right? Uh, we start with a pi over two pulse to rotate it. Maybe I, I should still draw it. Too lazy not to draw it. So you know what I'm talking about. This is X, this is Y, this is Z. So we have this uh, broad sphere, right? So if I start with, uh, let's say the one state or, or the ground state, I call it ground state. Then when I do the pi over two about X, then it will go to here, right? Make sense? About X, right? I rotate about X. Okay, and then what do we do? We wait for some time, right? It waits and then it will process, and then we rotate it back, right? And then we expect if you process all the way to negative y, we rotate it again, it actually will go to the top, right? If it process all the way back to positive y, then it will go back to zero. And that's why we get this oscillation, right? But the magnitude decreases because of the coherence. The vector becomes shorter and shorter because it can be represented by uh, many vector not uh, rotating at the same time. Okay, that's a way mathematical to model it, but you just trust that. I also don't know that well. But the point is that you get a decay, right? So now, this envelope, right? I'm giving you hints again. Uh, T, to, this is e equals to e to the power negative t divided by t2 star, right? And this is going to be equals to e to the power negative 1 when t equal to t2 star, correct? So based on this, I can estimate what is the t2. For example, uh, that doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you, you, you need, for this particular case, because it's not centered at zero, it normalized to from, it's not centered at zero. You want to look at the center at zero. This part is about e to power negative one compared to this part. Okay, and then that's why they get this about 120 minute second. At about 120 minutes, uh, 0 0.12 millisecond, 120 microsecond, they say the T2 star is this. So when the envelope reaches 0 0.69, uh, that's the 0 0.69, it's like one time constant? That's is that 0 0.69 or 0 0.3? Yeah. No, but, but we are talking about, this is not exactly the right equation because the center is here, 0 0.5. So it should be, uh, you see what I mean? Yeah, so so it should be 0 0.39. Because when you decay to infinite uh, distance, uh, infinite time, this will stay at 0 0.5, okay. right? So my equation is not exactly correct if you want to do that, right? This should be... Uh, 0 0.5 plus this guy. 0 0.5 plus 1 over 2 e to the power negative t over t star. Right? So that when t equals 0, this is 1. When t equals to infinity, this is 0 0.5. Right? So you need to, this whole thing equals to 0 0.69, like what you said. And that it means, and then this thing equal to 0 0.19. 
then e to the other you know, point three eight, right? So e to the power. So so be careful about this, right? So if I ask you to find t two, you think about this carefully, okay? Uh, so yeah, so the, I mean, every paper will show this to show their coherence time, but this can be due to some uh, imperfection, right? Some noise that maybe can be removed in the future. It's just their system has a lot of defect. So they do something called Hans echo to rem remember the echo bit. Uh, so because of time, I think I won't go into these details. Right? Let's just forget, know that, that you can do echo. Then they will be able to extend the decoherence time to 1.2 milliseconds. This is something that they do is so they, they cancel out some of the noise, some of the decoherence, which is not inherent uh, to the qubit. Okay, it's, it's not saying that if we have the right algorithm or we have better crystal or better structure, it's possible to extend to 1.2 milliseconds. And then they can even see it's called something called CPMG. This is the initials of the author. And what they do is that just like Hans echo, but they rotate at the y axis, but for many times, 500 times, they can extend to 28 milliseconds. Right? This is just a way to explore what is the theoretical limit they can go. Right, that they can control uh, as an engineer. That's my understanding. Yeah. So how useful are these two metrics? Because you want to be able. I mean, if, for what they have, only this one is useful, right? This is what they have. But in principle, if they can get rid of those that they can cancel, then they will have a much longer time. Okay, because this one can be due to what? For example, the uh, long uniformity of the magnetic field. Long uniformity of magnetic field can also cause short T2 time. Right? So in principle, what, like, this is not uniform because it's finite. If I have five, infinitely long line and then my perme well, permeability of the material is constant, perfect, and then other things are perfect, Right, I don't know what else are the cause, then they can have such a long time, or even 28 milliseconds. Yeah, but for what they have, they only can work with this. Or some special algorithm, maybe can, they can take advantage of the echo to make it longer. Okay, again, <laughs> my limited understanding, okay. Okay, so this is the gate fidelity, right? So. Uh, because of time, I don't think I want to go into here, but just want to tell you there's something called Clifford Gate. They try to test on different Clifford Gates and to see their uh, fidelity. And they are all very similar. They just shift it for comparison. Okay, so I'm not going to go here, right? I want to move forward and then uh, talk about two cubic gates. So we agree, right? We all agree we can do one cubic gate now, right? And you always need to look at the fidelity. Right? You know how the architecture already, this is the first time we fulfill the name of the class, right? So we now do uh, qubit. Okay, how about two qubit gates? Uh, before that, as a review also, right? Uh, I want to go through this. Uh, how do we do entangle? The, the two qubit gate, the most important thing is not two separate single qubit operation. It's about it can do entanglement operation. For example, control not gate. Right, if your qubit are just single qubit, you don't need quantum computer, right? I mean, two single qubit operation, you don't need quantum computer, as we discussed earlier. How do we do entanglement, right? So our goal is to form the C not gate, but you will see in many technologies, they don't form the C not gate directly because the physics is not suitable to form the C not gate. But however, here I'm going to show you, for example, in this case, there are two steps to form the C not gate. But before that, let me just uh, talk about, let's just review the circuit. For example, if, I, if you have a circuit like this. This is the C naught gate circuit, right? And I add a hard armor gate. I start with zero, zero, correct? So how does it propagate? All the, uh, I mean, I will tell you, but usually the 
Input is on the left, the output is on the right, right? So let, let's start with this. What is the state of this one? If I want to write in bracket notation, we did that in assignment one. Yeah, zero tensor zero, or I just write zero zero. It's perfectly fine to say zero tensor zero. How about half, after half down my gate, what it becomes? Very good. Yeah, I think you all know, but uh, I will write it in this way first. It doesn't matter. I know it becomes plus, but you can further expand it. You say this is one over square root two. Uh, what is plus? Zero plus one, right? The whole thing tends to product zero. Are you familiar with this uh, notation, right? Plus zero, although looks ugly, but you know it's plus tensor zero, right? It'll be familiar with this. So this one becomes one over square root two, zero, zero plus one, zero. Okay? So what happened to here? After you pass through this gate, you do need this one to tell you what happened, right? This is what? Control not gate, right? Yeah, C not very good. So this becomes what? What happened to zero, zero? Still zero, zero because the controlling bit is zero, the target bit is zero. How about the next one? One, one, excellent. Then we form the entanglement, right? So this is not the C not gate, I'm sorry. This is just to form entanglement. Right? So just, just to show that C not gate is important. That's why we need C not gate, right? So C not gate, uh, if you write it in matrix, what is that? It's a two QP, so it is four by four matrix. One, zero, zero, zero. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So our goal is to form this gate, okay? So the first thing we want to try is the use control phase shift gate pi to form C not gate. Okay. So if I give you a control phase shift with pi, and what is a control phase shift gate? Do you remember? One zero 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 one zero 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 one zero because it's control phase shift. So only when the controlling QB is one, then you do the phase shift, right? And phase shift is one e to power negative i, uh, one e to power i phi, right? So this is zero 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 e to the power i pi. Okay, control phase shift gate. And this one gives us what? One zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 zero. What is that? Minus one. Right? Because e to the power i pi equals to cosine pi plus i sine pi, which is negative one. Okay, so this is minus one. So I claim that I can form that. So how do we form that? I just give you the answer. So I show you that if I first apply the Hadama gate first, and then add the console phase shift pi, and then do this Hadama gate to the second qubit, then I will be able to form the C naught gate. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can find this by inspection, right? Otherwise, we can just uh, as a practice. What is I tensor product H? Do you remember? Uh, of course you remember, but just let's uh, practice. One zero zero one tensor product H, one square root two, one 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 negative one, correct? That is one tensor product H. So be very careful about the most living bits and least living bits, okay? Now this one has nothing to do with this circuit, okay? This is just to show entanglement, right? Here I try to form the gate. So what is this one? What? Uh, yeah, thank you. Just copy, right? You need to make sure you know this, otherwise you will fail the exam. Not exactly the same thing, right? How to do tensor product, okay? And then times the control phase shift gate. Right? And then I just uh, write this.
right? So I'm not going to go to the details. Uh, the matrix multiplication, you should know how to do it. So this is wrong. Yeah, then then we'll see that this is just equal to C not gate. That's why I'm showing my cheat sheet. Just do it yourself. Okay. So now this is the first step to show that if it can make, give me a control phase shift pi gate, I will be able to create the control not gate. But then how do you con create a control phase shift pi gate? Okay. Now this is related to this QB because uh, uh, we need to uh, do that. So how to create a control phase? Now the problem is this, right? Actually, I, I, I teach in this way. Maybe I should reverse all the. The more the, the problem is, is the two cubic gates we can have is in this form. Uh, what do we call it? Control phase shift gate uh, with two different phase okay so uh, my goal is to create from this right here I just want to do more exercise so I will use something called U which I can get from the silicon spin qubit the electron spin qubit okay due to physics right U equals to one zero 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 e to the power i phi zero 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 e to the power i pi minus phi zero right so this is very badly written zero 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 e to the power i phi zero zero e to the power i pi minus phi zero 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 one I can get this from the physical system, which I will show you later. Or even I actually did not show, I just say that it can do that. Okay. Uh, then what we can do is you will get control phase shift pi equals to U times I tensor product phase shift gate for phi. This is one qubit phase shift gate, okay, which we know how to do it. And then phase shift with negative pi tensor product i. Okay, so let's review a little bit, right? What is i tensor product phase shift gate? Again, this is 1001 tensor product, and what is the phase shift gate? Uh, no negative, yeah, just I phi, right? With this, then you get what? One zero zero e to the power I phi, right? Remember, I hope that you know how to do tensor product. I, I just put, put the whole thing to here, and then put the whole thing to here, right? And then read the rest are just zero. And then one zero zero e to the power I phi, yeah, that's how you get it. this gate is a diagonal gate, right? And similarly, how do you get this uh, P S but negative phi? Uh, no, negative. What I'm doing? Negative. Oh, negative pi. Negative pi, right? Tensor product i. Then what do you get? Phase shift gate is one zero zero negative pi, right? What is negative pi? Is that negative? Uh, sorry, I, I, I missed one thing. It doesn't make sense to have negative pi. It should be uh, phi minus pi. Okay, the phase shift is phi, not phi minus pi. Okay, so this is e to the power i phi minus pi tensor product 1, right? Why it is I gave to you? Because by doing this, I will be able to construct the CPS pi. U times this two will give it. Yeah. So this is something. Uh, I, yeah, I, I figure out myself also. 
So this is equal to what? 1001000000000 and then e to the power i phi minus pi e to the power i phi minus pi is this okay right i hope that you you don't mess up with this right and remember when you do circuit you go from left to right but when you do multiplication matrix you go from right to left do you see what i mean Right? For example, in this circuit, if you do multiplication, you start with uh, no H tensor plot, right? H tensor plot I, and then C naught, right? And then you get the output, and this is the input, correct? Yeah, right for matrix multiplication, right? You need to multiply this one to here and then this one to here. So don't mess up, right? I'm going to give you hints again in the exam. Be careful, right? You've done that in the assignment already. Right. Now here, I also don't go, go through the math. I just want to show you that indeed just prove, prove yourself. Just substitute the number because of time. You will see that if I have this U gate in this form, I will be able to form a CPS pi by using this. And these are one cubic gate, which I can do it, right? Phase shift gate, easily, right? By using normal precession, right? Uh, so the point is that I need to get this U gate. Now, but then I won't, I will keep this for next time to show that you can get this U gate. Uh, this is not that important. I won't include two cubic in the exam, but you do need to know all this, uh, circuit, right? This has nothing to do with the two physical two qubit. Okay. So for the rest of the time, maybe I just do some review with you, right? So I'm going to unplug the, because I forgot what I put in the exam. <laughs> uh, and I want to just uh, give the okay, yes. So the exam will cover up to today's lecture. You cover all the way to today. And uh, we spend a lot of time on density matrix. We spend a lot of time to decompose the density matrix to the poly matrix, right? And you did that in the assignment. And you, you're supposed to understand everything in the assignment, right? And all the unitary Hermitian, uh, what is a density matrix, what is a pure state, what is a mixed state, all this you need to know, right? And the equations, I, today I gave you the tips, right? At least what those equations you put, should put there. I think that's it. Or do you have any questions? Uh, what is the cheat sheet? Uh, one, one cheat sheet, two sided. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Microscope. Uh, but you cannot bring a microscope. So, so, yeah. It's four, four questions, yeah. Um, right, I mean, if you did study, you should go have gone through the equation and just write that in cheat sheet, right? And just to encourage you to study, yeah. No, no, no. You don't need to derive the equation, but you need to understand what you have done. <laughs> yeah, definitely not to derive the oscillation or this way. Yeah. So you know my style, who, those who told my class before, right? You don't need to, I am not asking for length-free derivation or some very genius uh, Olympic level math, right? It, it's just reasonable. But the most important is you understand the class, the concept. Okay, there is one question which is uh, relatively difficult, but I break it into many steps, five steps. So I could have just asked you for one, uh, one question, but I break it into five steps. And even uh, to the extent that after question A, I assume you did it wrong, I gave you the answer, then you continue from that part, right? So don't panic, right? Just keep doing, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I will post it uh, tonight for assignment two, right? Yeah.
because we have one student who has special uh, urgency, who has urgency, then I allow him to submit uh, tomorrow. So that's why I will post it tonight. Yeah. Okay, good. If no more questions, we can stop here. Okay, just study. I need you to study, and don't worry too much. <laughs>